This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 2, this is Section 3, Last and Final Part, The Secret Dream, Part 2. Let's bring it down to a simpler scale. It seems like the mind is dreaming that it is a person and so the world is a part of your own dream you gave away and saw as if it were its start and ending both. If you believe your existence is as a person What is the start of personhood? It is birth. And what is the ending? The ending is death. That is the same as the grander scale of the Big Bang and eventual implosion. The same thing on a smaller scale is the birth and the death of the body. The ego has all the complexities explained. How bodies are born, sexual intercourse, the sperm and the egg, gestation, etc. And it likes to classify all the ways that bodies can die, such as AIDS, cancer, on and on. Friend, Let's debate when birth really starts. David Yes, we can debate when birth really starts and when life ends. Is someone a vegetable? Are they hooked up to life support? Are they brain dead? Are they dead when electrical brain activity stops? The ego is working so hard. The whole thing is made up and it is trying to cover both ends of it. And near-death experiences. Oh, then, friend, you go and come back? David, (laughs) you go and come back. The dreaming of the world is but a part of your own dream you gave away and saw as if it were its start and ending both. Yet was it started by your secret dream which you do not perceive although it caused the part you see and do not doubt is real. How could you doubt it while you lie asleep and dream in secret that its cause is real? Text chapter 27, section 7 Ah, the belief in separation is where the dreaming of the world came about. Has anybody seen the belief in separation from God? And did they perceive that? Friend, not lately. David, which you do not perceive, although it caused the part you see and do not doubt, is real. How could you doubt it while you lie asleep and dream in secret that its cause is real? If you believe the ego is real, How could you doubt the dream? We have just read in the previous pages. Look then, beyond effects. It is not here the cause of suffering and sin must lie. Text chapter 27, section 7, para 5. And later on in the next paragraph, Seek not another cause, 
nor look among the mighty legions of its witnesses for its undoing. Ha! All those epidemiology studies that try to find the cause of things. As if science was somehow better than myths and old wives' tales. Epidemiologists study things that are happening normally and governments do it on purpose. But you put it out there anyway. It is all in your dream. Do not get angry at the government. There is no government outside your mind. (laughs) You just constructed it that way. You had the government be the evildoers or the bad guys. And you had the people in the subway be the good guys. You start to see that it cannot be so. It is all made up. That is good news. A brother separated from yourself. An ancient enemy. A murderer who stalks you in the night and plots your death yet plans that it be lingering and slow. Of this you dream. Yet underneath this dream is yet another, in which you become the murderer, the secret enemy, the scavenger, and the destroyer of your brother and the world alike. Here is the cause of suffering, the space between your little dreams and your reality. The little gap you do not even see. The birthplace of illusions and of fear. The the time of terror and of ancient hate. The instant of disaster. All are here. Here is the cause of unreality. And it is here that it will be undone. Text chapter 27, section 7. You could think of this as the little gap. Every time we come together, we are going inward toward the little gap. Toward this itty-bitty gap. This little blip. This tiny mad idea that the Son of God remembered not to laugh about. It is buried, covered over and protected. That is what has to be exposed That is the tree trunk from which all the branches and all the seeming beliefs seem to come. But the gap is impossible. There is no gap. A stepping stone might be to say that the gap is past. Here I am, Lord. Now. The gap is past. If the gap is past then everything that seemed to have sprung from the gap is past as well. Hence we get statements in the course like, The world was over long ago. Text chapter 28, section 1. And lesson number 7. I see only the past. I see only the past in the sense that what is producing the world is past. And what it seems to produce the world is also past. If I do not experience that the past is gone, then the past and the ego seem to have a reality. Guilt and fear seem real. You cannot bring the unholy instant and the holy instant together. The meaning of the holy instant is that it is all there is. To keep trying to bring the unholy instant into the holy instant is just another way of saying that you are not aware of the holy instant. There are a number of ways we can come at it. But it is really just about getting very clear about the past and the present. Friend, You said the gap is analogous to a tree trunk? David, 
In a sense, the whole tree rests on the trunk. If you look at the branches, they are all funneled into one place. The trunk is the base from which they all come. This tiny gap is the base from which everything springs. Another way to describe the gap would be that the gap is the wrong mind. Or you could use the idea of the thinker and the thoughts. Sometimes you hear people talking about feeling terrible because they are having judgmental thoughts. They feel guilty about it. But those thoughts and the thinker that seems to be thinking them are both illusions. They are both the wrong mind. The image maker and the images are both the same thing. That is why the right mind just sees the gap as the gap. The right mind sees the gap as false. That is a very simple definition for the right mind. The right mind is not part of the gap tucked in there somewhere. It just sees the gap as false. That is where the simplicity comes in. You are the dreamer of the world of dreams. No other cause it has nor ever will. Nothing more fearful than an idle dream has terrified God's son and made him think that he has lost his innocence, denied his father and made war upon himself. So fearful is the dream, so seeming real, he could not waken to reality without the sweat of terror and a scream of mortal fear. Unless a gentler dream preceded his awakening and allowed his calmer mind to welcome, not to fear, the voice that calls with love to waken him. God willed he waken gently and with joy and gave him means to waken without fear. Text chapter 27, section 7 There is such a stark contrast between the sweat of terror, a scream of mortal fear, and unless a gentler dream preceded his awaking and allowed his calmer mind to welcome not to fear the voice that calls with love to waken him. The awakening process perceived through the lens of the wrong mind, the lens of the ego, will seem like the sweat of terror and a scream of mortal fear. Is there anybody in this room who has not experienced that? End of section 3 of chapter 2